Hello there. In this video, I will be showing you how I designed and built the fuselage and tail of my new homemade RC aeroplane. This craft is designed for aerial photography and FPV and will have two electric brushless motors. I first made a few rough sketches just to get an idea of the size and general configuration of this aeroplane. Then I started work on the tail boom. <laughs> So I just got the foam board uh, fuselage tube for the rear section of the fuselage all taped up and I'm going to leave it like this for a few hours just to um, sufficiently fatigue the foam so that it retains the shape and it's much easier to glue and will require much less force to glue and clamp together. Okay so it's five hours later and it looks like uh, the foam board fuselage tube is all ready to be glued up. So now the gluing of the foamboard fuselage tube is complete. I've just clamped it at both ends and I'm going to leave it now overnight just to set and when I come back in the morning it'll be ready um, to fit to the airplane. So after leaving it for the night to dry, hopefully this foamboard fuselage tube will be all ready to go and all ready to install a tail and the fuselage onto. Okay, so I just got the fuselage finally completed. I didn't show the build montage of this part because if you built any flight test design like the Flight Test Explorer or uh, Mustang or Spitfire, um, you'll know how this fuselage, fuselage comes together rather. Uh, it's just a simple B fold right there. Actually, believe it or not, I have a flight test, what I call Super Explorer, stored up on the rafters up there, um, which I'll be doing a video on very soon. I actually have a few of my early videos on this channel were of this plane. But anyway, back to this design. Here are the locations where I'm going to mount a wooden dowel here and here. And that'll secure the wing on top of this area here. Uh, I also cut a little bit of a hatch in here 
the reason why there's a hole in the center is to run the uh, servo wires from each wing and of course the motor wires and have them connect up to uh, the receiver here right in the center of the plane uh, it also has enough space to fit uh, you know a flight controller or something of that nature in there coming around to the front this area I will soon uh, push uh, some foam board over to give a nice smooth uh, rounded appearance in the bottom here and also to prevent you know moisture and such going into the camera equipment and such up here in here will be mounted uh, some sort of a action camera uh, um, a smaller diameter one than the Grow Pro which I have which is called an iTech Pro it was about 50 euro in uh, Aldi I do believe back in back last year uh, coming around to the rear there'll also be another position to mount a camera at the back here so there'll be one camera facing forward another camera facing rearwards which will be quite unique um, from an FPV perspective the tail boom of course is just glued in the top with hot glue and a special little feature of this aircraft if we flip it and invert it you can see right here I have a little cargo area here that faces downwards uh, what my intention is initially here is to mount a action camera like the GoPro facing downwards so you get uh, a view looking down like I'm showing on the camera now of the ground which will be really unique to have on a fixed wing drone like this I also want to drop maybe some miniature cargoes like um, miniature parachutes and such from this area uh, by means of a servo mechanism along the top uh, but for now I'm just keeping this empty uh, while I focus on actually building the rest of this airframe. The next bit I'm going to build of this plane uh, is the tail plane and tail control surfaces and of course mount the servos for that. So let's get started.
So that's it everyone. I just completed um, the very basic fuselage of my new scratch build aircraft design for camera work and light FPV. Here it is complete, complete. Uh, or nearly complete. I still have a little bit of work to do on the bottom of the fuselage where I have to just put a former here um, just to smooth over that surface. But apart from that, this fuselage and the electronics that are needed for the tail are pretty much complete now. As you see, I just mounted the elevator and the rudder servo on the exterior of the plane. Even though it looks less aesthetically pleasing, um, I did so just to so that I could access and maintain the servos a bit more easy, uh, easier, rather. Uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, um, it's quite difficult to, to actually go digging into um, previously built aircraft in order to um, uh, replace a servo that's just broken or it's burnt out or malfunctioned. Um, so I've just mounted them here just to make it a little bit easier even though aerodynamically I lose a little bit here um, For me the trade-off was worth it. This plane is going to be quite a utilitarian and functional design uh, Moving on to here. I just glued the entire tail surface um, to the rear tail bloom using hot glue Then I just taped over it here using duct tape uh, just to add a little bit more uh, structural integrity to this part Moving forward, uh, I just have this temporary setup um, with this 1,800 uh, milliamp lithium ion lithium battery. That's just so I could um, just run the servos for the demonstration I gave at the start of the video. Uh, I have a 40 amp brushless ESC. There'll be two of these in the plane when it's complete. Um, when I have the wing wing mounted on here. Um, and each engine in the cell, um, they'll be mounted right here and right here, respectively. Um, there'll actually be two of these in each engine in the cell, and these will, of course, be linked to individual batteries, um, which will be 2200 uh, milliamp hour LiPo batteries. Uh, that's what I intend to use for this twin. Uh, the receiver, of course, is where it will be on the completed model. In this little access bay here, um, I'll have uh, the servo leads from the elevator and rudder running through the tail boom, which they already are, um, leading into the receiver. And of course, um, both aileron servos from either side of the wing, here and here. And of course, uh, the throttle motor, which is probably one of the most important bits of the aircraft, will also run in here to this little turnigy receiver so it'll be a nice place to locate the receiver and also to troubleshoot um, any additional problems that may arise with this aircraft um, in the future i want to i may i want to fit an autopilot or some sort of flight controller so there's plenty of space in here to do so as you can see the receiver is quite small so i could easily accommodate uh, quite a large uh, autopilot or similar system in here Moving around to the front, the front is the last bit that just needs a bit of finishing off. All it needs, as I mentioned before, is just a piece of foam board here in order to make the surface uh, more aerodynamic. And of course, the so moisture doesn't get up and mess up the electronic components up here. And of course, there'll be a camera mount uh, at the top here for a little GoPro camera uh, or similar action camera. As you can see here, the horizontal um, and vertical surfaces are absolutely massive. Uh, they're the biggest of any plane I've built or designed for that matter. Uh, for reference, here is the tail of a flight test explorer. This one is made from chloroplast, um, you know, that plastic material that signs are made out of. And just for a little bit of a size comparison, here they are side by side. It's hard to probably judge from this image, but the stabilizer on this aircraft is about 20% uh, to 25% taller uh, than that of the Explorer's tail fin. Um, so, I mean, that's a pretty massive size to have. 
The reason I went with a large vertical stabilizer is because if you look at the forward section of the aircraft, it has quite a, quite a wide um, and deep fuselage, uh, which basically means as it's as the plane would be flying into a crosswind on landing, if it was coming in very slowly, the wind was hit. Be, if the wind was to actually hit it on this side in the crosswind, uh, it would crab over to that side. So in order to compensate, uh, that's why I gave it this absolutely massive vertical stabilizer and a massive rudder. I also added these little bracing struts made out of bamboo. Uh, I didn't think the plane exactly needed it, I just um, put them there just for a little additional rigidity and also for a little bit of um, structural insurance, seeing as this uh, vertical tail surface is just so large. And as you can see, it's quite stiff. Uh, if you like this video, please do consider subscribing. Um, thanks and bye for now. Thank you once again for watching this video. I just want to thank Flight Test, Experimental Airlines and Project Air for the techniques used to build this plane, as well as many other aircraft that I've previously built. If you want to build this aircraft, please subscribe, as I plan to release the blueprints for this design in the future if it is successful. Bye for now.